Okay, so you have your Outlook account set up, but how are you going to organize it? There are several options available, and in this video, instead of focusing on the different theories, I'm just gonna walk you through the tools so that you can pick and choose the things that make the most sense to you. When you log into Outlook for the first time, you will see a few standard folders. The inbox is for all new messages drafts to keep track of all messages you are writing but have not yet sent. Then you have sent items, deleted items, and junk mail. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the toolbar at the top of the email pane. And we're going to start on the right-hand side with the sort by options. The default sort is by date with the newest messages on top but you can change how your inbox is sorted by using one of these pre-formatted options. For example, instead of sorting my messages by date, I can sort them by who they're from. When I do that, each person gets their own category, which is collapsible. Notice that as soon as I change the sort, the jump to box came up. It lets you conduct a quick search and jump to the first email that matches that search. The sort and jump to options are tied together. So since the sort is from, I can jump to all messages from a specific person. For example, I'm going to type in Nestor's name and then click go. Now you see the first message from Nestor at the top of my inbox. Let's switch the sort back to date. Then click the down arrow icon to bring the jump to option back and look for emails based on date. You can choose from the predefined options or select a custom date. The next item that we have on the toolbar is filter. Outlook doesn't filter your messages by default. It shows everything in your inbox. The predefined options are used to narrow down the list of emails. Maybe you only want to see emails that have files. In this case, there's only one that meets that criteria. Notice that the filter icon changed to look like a paperclip so that you know that the current filter option is attachment. When I click on that icon, the filter is released and it goes back to the all items view. The last icon on the toolbar at the top of the email pane is select. When you click on this, it basically puts a box next to each email so that you can select multiple emails to take action on. Now that you know how to sort and filter your inbox, let's add another organization layer and look at the tag section of the home ribbon. When a message is selected, you will see a few options, pin, flag, categorize, and snooze an email. If you choose pin, the email will move to the top of the inbox and stay at the top even when new messages come to the inbox. This is one of my favorite ways to keep track of a message so that I don't lose track of it while waiting for more information. Flag can also help you keep track of messages. When you use this option, a couple of things will happen. First, it's going to automatically create a task in the to-do application, which is used to track your personal tasks. Second, you can set a follow-up time by using the pre-formatted options or picking a custom date. One of the things to know about flagged messages is it will keep its place in your email list. So when new messages land in your inbox, the flagged item will fall further down the list. In the settings video, we looked at the quick actions that you can use to organize your email. Flag and pin are two of the defaults. So you can use those directly from the email card instead of going to the ribbon. The next option we have in the tag section of the ribbon is to categorize our emails. This allows us to create color-coded tags to apply to messages. It's important to know that these are the same tags that are also used to color code your calendar. When you click on categorize, you'll see a few tags that use the color as the tag name. To change the name of the category, click manage category. Next to any of the colors, click on the pencil icon to update the name. While you're in there, you can always pick one of the other colors that are available. But for this example, I'm just going to leave the original green and click save. 
If this is a category that you plan to use often, click the star next to it to mark it as a favorite. Now let's go back to the inbox to apply the tag. We'll select an email, click categorize, and then select the tag. The other way to apply a category is to use the hotkey C. This brings up the category list and you can select one or even create a new one from here. As you add tags to the email, they will show up right next to the subject line in the reading pane. They can also appear below the subject line in the email pane. Now, let's say while reading through my emails, I came across one that I'm not ready to deal with, but I also wanna clean out my inbox because I'm kind of a zero inbox person. One of the options we have in the tags pane is to snooze. The hotkey for this is B. When clicking snooze, you can choose a date and time. The message is going to be moved from the inbox and go to the snooze folder. You may not see this folder in your list until you use the feature for the first time. On the email card, you will see when it will come back to your inbox. If you want to unsnooze the message, just right click on it and select unsnooze. So far, we've assumed that you're going to use the standard folders created by Microsoft, but you can create your own. Now, as a tip, I always say to create your folders with intention, because if you have too many with no organization in mind, they become very difficult to manage. So for this scenario, I'm going to create just a few folders based on some common categories. To do that, Hover the mouse over the name of the inbox to see the three dots for more options. The first item on the menu is Create New Folder. A new field is added to the folder navigation pane. The first common folder category is to name them after a person. So this one will be named for Nestor, who is a manager in this scenario. Then I'm going to create folders for Projects, Clients, and one for a category. Each icon in the folder navigation pane has a black outline that turns bold when selected. Another way to create a visual distinction for your folders is to color code them. Click the three dots next to a folder, click change color, then choose one of the 15 options. As each folder was created, they were added to the top of the folder list because the current default folder sort is custom. If you prefer to have Outlook automatically alphabetize the folders, go to the View tab at the top left side of the screen. In the Layout section of the ribbon, select Folder Pane. Then select Sort Folders. Choose Order Folders A to Z. When you choose this option, the default Outlook folders will be at the top of the list and all remaining folders will be sorted alphabetically. I prefer custom folder order, so I will switch it back. To put the folders in a preferred order, all you need to do is drag and drop them where you want them to go on the list. Now that we have the folder set up, we can start moving email from the inbox to the folders. The first option is to drag and drop any message into a folder by selecting the email, holding down the left mouse button, and dropping the message into the desired folder. If you added move as one of your quick actions, it shows up as a folder icon on the message. Click that icon and choose the folder that you want from the dropdown list. If you have several folders, you may need to use the search bar to find the one you want. If you don't have the quick option for your email, you can select an email, go to the ribbon, and click Move, or use the hotkey V. Let's go back to the toolbar at the top of the email pane and click the Select icon. I'm going to put a check mark in the box next to a few of these messages and use the hotkey V to move multiple messages from Nestor to his folder of the same name. This strategy is useful if you like to see all new messages in your inbox and only move them as you read and take action on your email. 
You might have some scenarios where you want to automatically move an email to a folder as soon as it arrives in your Outlook account. I tend to do this with newsletters and automated messages. However, for today's example, everything from Nestor should go to his folder and bypass the inbox. To make that happen, we're going to create a rule. Go to Rules in the Move section of the Home ribbon and click Create a Rule. Because a message is already selected, Outlook assumes that I want a rule to move the message from the selected sender to a folder. In this example, that assumption is correct. All you need to do is click the drop down to select a folder from the list. But what if you want to move messages based on criteria other than who sent the email? Click the More Options link instead. The Settings dialog box is going to open and Rules is already selected. We just have to fill in the details. In the first box, rename the rule. In the Add a Condition section, click the drop down for the first criteria. There are several options to choose from, such as subject lines, keywords, and whether or not your name is on the to line, CC line, etc. Let's select the subject or body includes. Then in the second criteria box for the condition, type the word metrics. For the action, choose move to. Then click the drop down to select a folder and choose the metrics folder. I know there are messages already in my inbox that match this rule, so I will place a check mark next to run rule now and Outlook will gather up the existing emails in the inbox and move them. When the next message arrives that matches the rule, it will automatically go to the selected folder. Now, while we're in the settings, we're going to click on conditional formatting to create a special kind of rule that allows you to color code your incoming messages. In the right hand corner of the dialog box, click add rule. For step one, give it a name. For the condition, choose one of the options from the list. I'm going to select subject line includes and type the keyword quarterly report. Then choose a color from the available options. Make sure that you don't choose the same color as the default for your inbox. So for example, the default for my test account is cranberry red. I'll skip that one and pick sky blue. Then click OK. The rule is automatically applied to every email and you don't have to tell it to run. Let's go back to the inbox. Notice that this email from Alex has the key term quarterly report in the subject line. As an unread email, the subject line is bolded and has the sky blue color applied. Unlike a message that doesn't have conditional formatting, when this message is marked as red, the subject line and the date and time will retain the selected color. Another way that you can organize your emails is to use quick steps. These are like rules that you can apply manually and you can take multiple actions and combine them into one click. I don't have any set up, so I'm going to go to quick steps in the toolbar and then select manage quick steps. The settings dialog box will open. Click the add quick step button. In this example, I want to combine pin and create task into one action. In the Choose an Action section, I'm going to select the first action from the dropdown, which in this case is PIN. Then click Add an Action and scroll down the list to find Create Task. This is all you need to do to set up a quick step. However, there is an optional section where you can create a description for the quick step and choose one of the five predefined shortcuts. I don't particularly find control shift and a number to be a useful shortcut key for me. It's a bit too clunky. So I'm going to leave that blank. Let's save and go back to the inbox. I'm going to select this email from Adele and then go to quick steps in the home ribbon to choose pin and task. Notice that the email was moved to the top of my inbox 
and the My Day pane open from the right hand side of the screen on the To Do tab. There is a task that was created associated with this email and the email was added to the task as a reference. Now let's look at an organizational option that I think is often overlooked and that's favorites. This is the section at the top of your folder navigation pane where you can pin the things that you use most. For example, when we set the follow up category and click the star in settings, the tag was added to the favorites section. If I click the follow up tag, it's going to pull back all of the messages with that tag in the email pane and it will even tell me what folder I've moved it to if it's not in the inbox. By default, Outlook puts the inbox, sent items, and drafts in the favorites section. If you don't want them there, you can just select each one and click remove from favorites. You can add folders to your favorites by clicking the three dots next to any folder and select add to favorites. Another way to add favorites is to click the three dots next to the word favorites at the top of the pane and a search bar with a few options will appear. You can add a person, a folder, or a category. A few choices will be in the selection box, but if you don't see the one that you want, you search to find what you're looking for. For example, I work with Adele on multiple projects, so I will make her a favorite. Then when I select her name from the favorites, I will see every email that includes Adele. Notice that below the time on the email preview, you can see what folder the message is associated with. In this case, there are some in metrics, inbox, and cobalt systems. You can drag and drop the favorites into any order that makes sense to you, even if you've selected A to Z as the way to organize the folders in your account for the main inbox. The last thing that we're going to look at is search. No matter how good your organizational schema is, there's inevitably going to be a time when you need to search for an email, either because it ended up in the wrong folder or you can't remember where you put it. At the top of the screen, there's a search bar. When you put your cursor in the box, you will see a drop down on the left side to search a specific folder. On the right side of the search box, there's a filter option that does include a folder filter, but it also lets you use other search criteria, such as who the email is from, names that might be on the to or the CC line, keywords, and date. For example, I want to run a search for the keyword metrics. Every email that contains that word appears. In this scenario, metrics is a term that is used often because it's around the time that we submit our quarterly reports. So that criteria is too broad to be useful. I'm gonna go back and modify my keyword and use the date filter to narrow down the search. The new list of emails is much smaller and it's easier to find the one that I'm looking for. So as you can see, taking all of these different options into account, you can organize your emails in a way that makes sense to you. I personally prefer to move things out of my inbox and leave only the messages that need my attention, but there's no right or wrong, just what works for you. So for this video, I wanted to focus on the actual features that you could use before jumping into organizational theories. But if you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share, drop a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.